Brian Grimes, your real estate mentor, back with another action-packed session. Today, we're going to talk about getting rid of squatters the 24-7 cash flow way. So the easier ways to get squatters out or keep them out of your property. Stay tapped in if you've been thinking about squatters or worrying about this as you're on your investment journey. If you're new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment that says, I subscribe. For everyone who leaves that comment, I'm going to send you instant access to one of my free trainings. It'll show you how to acquire properties for pennies on a dollar all across the country. You don't want to miss out on that free offer. Um, if you're interested in any of our programs, the ride along, we have our next real estate ride along May 18th, where we're going to bring out a group from around, around the country. We're going to show you about 10 to 15 full gut rehab projects all across the city, show you how to invest out of town, out of state where your money goes further. Uh, so that can get you over the fear of out of state investing by just seeing how our operation is run. So definitely reach out, tap into that. We have pre-sale tickets uh, that are on a discount. So there's a 50% discount. Just click the links in the description. You can tap into that. There's a, a link for that. If you're interested in our boots on the ground program where we uh, find properties, finance them, renovate them, tenant and manage them for you, we'll manage them at 5%. So uh, we even manage below market. If you're interested in that boots on the ground program, reach out, call the number uh, below, text the number below, DM me but we have limited space. We only have, I believe, two seats available for the Boots on the Ground program right now because the demand is high. People keep tapping in, especially from the West Coast because they want to get into markets like Philly. Philly, by the way, is the sixth largest city in America. It's the, uh, I, I would say the largest city in the top 10 cash flow cities in the country. So if you want to get cash flow and you want to be in a big city and how I tell people, you know, if you believe in New York, New York City is the city of the world in, in many senses. If you believe that New York City has value, Philly's the sister city to New York. So you definitely believe in Philly. Uh, reach out and you can tap into that boots on the ground program. We'll find you some properties and build you some cash flow. Uh, and if you're interested in our other mentorship programs and just learning this game, you can also reach out and we'll get you guys plugged in. Okay, so we covered that. So I want to keep this thing tight, guys. If you guys have questions, drop them in the chat section, drop them in the comment section. We will answer uh, some questions as we go through this but we're going to start with uh, some ways to get these squatters out squatters can be a nightmare situation i know you guys have heard horror stories but these are the ways uh, to get them out from my personal experience i haven't had to deal with too many squatters or uh, bad nightmare squatter situations philadelphia i'll get this question a lot is philly bad with squatters if i tap into the boots on the ground program am i going to have to deal with squatters I've built hundreds of properties in Philly. I've had dozens of properties sitting vacant in various stages of construction. I've never had somebody jump into one of those properties and try to squat and just sit there and we couldn't get them out or couldn't deal with them. I've never had that. I've bought properties with squatters in them, cash for keys them, got them right out and got the uh, deal done. So my experience with squatters has been overly positive, but I have all of these systems and I have a lot of knowledge uh, in place that I'm going to give to you guys today. So if you learn this stuff and master it and then take the systems that I give you, I'm going to save the systems for last. So stick around. Uh, you will be able to get to the next level safely. So let's get in here. Um, here's how to get rid of squatters the 24 seven cash flow way. So first we need to establish what these uh, squatter rights are. And when you're talking about squatters, what you're talking about is something called adverse possession. So it takes a long time for someone to legally squat in your property and take your property. And some people don't know this, but yes, if you leave a squatter in your property long enough, as little as five years, they could legally take your property and become the rightful owner. So you do have to be careful. You need eyes and ears on your properties. You need systems. Some of the systems we talk about on your properties, if you're doing out of state investing, it is important, but here's what adverse possession rights uh, are. Here's like the test. One, someone has to occupy the property through hostile means. So that just means without permission. It's kind of undefined what hostile means across the country because it's kind of state by state, court by court. But it has to be hostile. That doesn't mean somebody like you knocked on the door, they put a gun in your face. It doesn't have to be physically hostile. But hostile just meaning they don't have permission to be there. You don't want them there, but they're there. And they don't want to leave. And they're not leaving. Number two. They use the property. They must use the property as a true owner would. That's exclusivity. So they're not in the property with you. 
they're not running a room rental out of the property. They have to be using this typically as like a primary residence. So there's no commercial activity. They don't have a listing up on Zillow and they're like renting out beds on the side and using the property commercially. So they have to use it uh, as a true owner would. Number three, they must live on the property in a manner that is apparent to the owner and a reasonable person and or a reasonable person. And this is called open and notorious. So what that means is they need to be just kind of blatant about it. Like they come right out the front door, get in their car, go to work, go grab a cup of coffee. Like they're not really hiding in that property. So that's important. And then four is they occupy the property continuously for the duration of the state's mandated adverse possession period. That's five to 30 years. This is um, a breakdown. You guys can kind of find your state and look at this chart. You can kind of pause it and go back to it. But this is a breakdown. Some states are as much as 30 years or 18 to 21 years. Other states are as little as five years, 10 years, seven years. And this is why you need to pay close attention to this stuff because someone can squat in your property and then just take it from you if you let this go too long. So you, you have to stay aware of this. So now let's talk about some of the ways that you can get people out of your property if they get in. How can you deal with a squatter? Well, one is you can remove squatters in court. And I know what you guys are thinking. Well, Brian, I already knew I could do it in court, right? Isn't that slow? Well, not always. There are fast ways to do this in court. Uh, step one is you want to look for these fast track conditions. So places like Philly, they actually have this fast track process. They came up with this in 2018. And I think you're going to see this as part of a tidal wave. You guys know that, or you should know, in Florida, DeSantis just like signed a new bill, just crushing squatters rights completely. So he just like eliminated squatting, essentially. Like you could just get arrested, thrown in jail if you try to break into somebody's house and stay. But a lot of the states that are super blue, they're probably just going to go to this fast track uh, type of process. So learning it now and then keeping an eye out for it, you're going to start to see your states across the country are going to turn to this fast track process as a middle ground. And it, it can make sense. And this is why I like Philly. People will ask me about Philly. Is Philly landlord friendly or is it tenant friendly? It's balanced. So as long as you have your paperwork together, you know the uh, legal process, you can be very balanced. You can get people out quickly. If you don't know what you're doing, you're not studied, then you may have more problems than the average person. But here's the fast track process that you should learn. Uh, first, you need to know the fast track conditions. One, the affiant, which is you, the person who is filing the affidavit, is the owner. So you have to prove ownership. You have to come in with your uh, closing documents or, hey, here, I'm on the deed. Here's the e-recorded deed. I own this property. So you have to have some proof of ownership. That's easy to do. Two, the occupant. So you're showing that the person in the property is not licensed or privileged to be on the said residential property meaning they don't have a lease agreement. They don't have anything that uh, you executed with them that says that they have a right to be here. Uh, three, there's never been a landlord tenant relationship between the owner or a prior owner and the occupant. And if relevant, that the owner requires the assistance of the uh, city of Philadelphia police because the owner believes a crime is being committed. So that could be easy. Like, hey, I was talking to the neighbors. They said they were smoking over there. I think they're selling drugs out of there. You know, anything could be going on. But if you can prove uh, these four things or at least claim these uh, four things and then sign on an affidavit, you want to make sure you're telling the truth. Right. Um, you, you have met those fast track conditions and you can get this person out quickly now or people out. Step two, you need to file what's called an ejectment. It's important to understand this is not landlord tenant court. And you would almost wish you were in landlord tenant court because it's a bit more streamlined with an ejectment. This is just kind of an open court case. So you're like suing somebody, almost like if it was a civil lawsuit, which means this thing could drag six months, eight months, a year, a year and a half. It depends on how sophisticated the defendant is and if they have free attorneys or not. Some people are extremely low income, so they can qualify for free attorneys. I'm not necessarily saying that a free attorney would defend them in this because they're dead wrong. But if a free attorney does step up and they start filing uh, motions to delay the case, it could really drag like a year and a half and it could cost you a lot of money. This fast track process is probably only going to cost you six thousand, you know, three to six thousand, we'll call it. 
Um, if you were in an all out lawsuit for a year and a half, it's going to cost you 10 to 30,000. So not only is learning this process saving you a lot of money, but, um, you know, you, you hope you don't run into the wrong person. So I'm just kind of giving you guys some big picture numbers. So step two, you're going to file this ejectment under the ordinance. The owners wishing to evict criminal or defiant trespassers begin the process by filing a complaint in an ejectment in the court of common pleas. Once the complaint is filed under the ordinance, the aggrieved owners are instructed to file an emergency motion for injunctive release, asserting that the conditions required to obtain the immediate writ of possession have been met. Those are those conditions we just covered. The motion must be presented to the court within 24 to 48 hours of filing the motion. One thing I'll touch on quickly is you don't want to try to do this by yourself, not in the court. Cash for keys, I wouldn't even try by myself. And we'll talk about why. But you don't want to try to do this stuff yourself. You don't want to make mistakes. Uh, if you get in front of the judge, they're not playing around. The judges don't like regular people. I've stood in front of judges. I've represented myself against um, tenants who weren't paying. They don't really like it. This ain't Judge Judy. Like, you're not going to, nobody's going to laugh and applaud at the end. Like, the judges feel like you're wasting their time. They like to see the attorney there. They want to know you're serious. They want to see you as a serious business owner. And when you come in and represent yourself, they're like, this guy's broke. He, he's trying to figure it out. He's wasting my time. They might slam you and set you back or delay you for something minor. And you don't want to waste your time. You really want to hire an attorney, get it done the right way uh, the first time. Um, so that is that you want to follow your ejectment. That's 24 to 48 hours. Uh, step three, you're going to connect with the sheriff, assuming all conditions have been met and the judge grants the motion. The owner may file a writ of possession with the court. The stamp writ along with the court's order granting possession may be presented to the Philadelphia sheriff's office for service. The sheriff's office will serve or post the writ of possession in approximately five days. This is extremely fast guys, uh, faster than an eviction, uh, from receipt and designate a lockout date approximately 21 days thereafter. So this is really streamlining things. You're only like, at this point, about 60 days in. So you're you're close to getting somebody out within 60 days. Uh, bringing it all together, this process takes approximately three months start to finish because once you get that sheriff kind of lockout date, there could be some delays. Oh, it rained, the sheriff got booked. We had to push it back. But you're keeping this tight within a three month window. You might even be able to get this done in two months uh, with the streamlined process. Um, it's a stark difference between the six months to a year it could take to litigate any defendant ejectment action. Defendant meaning somebody's kind of pushing back and you're going through the full process. And I'm going to show you guys the full process in just a second. Hiring an attorney that is familiar with the new legislation and associated procedures can save owners thousands of dollars in legal fees and get owners access to and possession of their property several months, maybe even a year sooner than before the city council passed the ordinance. So definitely, if you run into a situation, look for these fast track processes, talk to an attorney and go this route because it's gonna save you, it could save you 10, $20,000 going this route. It's extremely important. Um, somebody tapped in with a quick question. Let's keep flowing. Guys, if you have more questions, um, we're going to cover them at the end, but go ahead and uh, drop them in because we're going to run through them quickly. This is the full process. So if you tried to go the regular way, you would have to come in, um, hire the attorney, file the ejectment. Then they're going to get, you have to serve that to them. So you have to make sure that that service is done properly. That's going to take probably 20 days. Then they're going to have 20 days to respond. And then if they don't respond, they're going to get another uh, 10 days additional. So that's 30 days in. Then the court is going to say, OK, they've been served. They're going to do a case management conference. That's another 60 days. Then they're going to schedule a trial date, another 60 days. Unless the court gets backed up, then it's going to be maybe 120 days. Then they're going to hold the trial and see how that goes. That's like a week. Then they're going to take 30 days to respond to that. Then the owner is going to request a judgment and a writ of possession. Another 30 days, another 30 days. Then the sheriff's going to serve the writ of possession, 20 days. Then they're going to uh, eject the occupant within some 20-day some period beyond that. So this thing can easily balloon to a year, like easily. So you, you definitely don't want to go the long way. And this is why people get to number two. So this is number one of getting them out. Number two and getting outside of the court system is where we're headed next. So 
if you want to just get outside of the court altogether, you're going to offer cash for keys. Some people, if you watch the news or you go on a blog, people say, oh, just call the tenant yourself and offer them cash for keys. I never do that. I always go the attorney route because the attorney is going to have a different effect towards the squatter. When they get that phone call from the attorney and they're like, hey, I'm representing 123 Main Street LLC. You're in our property. I've been hired to get you out. I can be your best friend or your worst enemy. I'm going to offer you some cash and you can take the cash and that would be a smart thing for you to do. And if you don't, I'm going to make your life a living hell. And that's how the attorney's going to talk. They're going to big dog. And that's what you're paying them for to go in to big dog to get your property back. But it's a lot more of a weight. It's almost like threatening a tenant. If you go to a tenant and say, look, I really need the rent this time, you know, just give me the money. And they're like, ah, I'll have it next week. I have it next week and they keep not having your money and you keep making excuses or listening to them. Once you hire that attorney and say the attorney calls and says, look, we need the money by Friday or we're filing. They know you're serious. They know you lawyered up. Once you lawyer up, everybody takes you seriously. And a lot of the times you won't even have to cash your keys. If they know you have an attorney, they're just going to bounce because they don't want to get on the bad side of the attorney. But the attorney, because they're big dog and they can usually negotiate that price lower than even you could. Um, because they know you're desperate, they, uh, you're desperate, and a lot of you don't have experience yet. You haven't dealt with hundreds of properties, so you're not even comfortable talking to contractors yet. You're not going to be talk comfortable talking to a squatter, or you're too emotional, you're too angry, upset. You need that third party to kind of come in and negotiate for you. So the first step to me is hire the attorney and get them to approach the tenant. If you don't have the tenant's contact information, skip trace them. Um, send you know some eyes and ears to knock on the door the attorney can put a notice on the door with their number on it we can do that too hey here's a 10-day notice you better call this number or you know we're gonna kick you out of the property people will call especially when they see the attorney step two make a cash for keys offer what how much do you offer well typically you're gonna start at like 500 bucks don't start high don't come in like i'll give you five grand just get out please don't start high it's a negotiation start low start like five hundred dollars seven hundred dollars let them work you up uh most people will get out for like a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars they're going to get out of the property if they get over three thousand then you just tell them look if you're going to ch charge me that much i'm just going to file the eviction on you and then i'm coming after you for the cost of the eviction everything cost of the ejectment all of it i'm not going to stop it's going to stay on your record i'll garnish your wages i'll do whatever i'll go to the end of the earth and then people will think about it and then take the money. But um, you typically don't want to be over 3000 because if you go much further over 3000, you might as well have just hired an attorney. Step three, make them sign paperwork. So many people miss out on this step. So they go, they get the cash for keys. They negotiate with the person. The person says, sure, I'll take 1500. So they give them the 1500, the person moves out and they just let them go. And a week goes by and the person's back in the house and they're asking for more money because now they know you're going to pay them. They know you'll give them money. So they're trying to squeeze you for more money or they're telling their buddy, hey, you come through now and, uh, you know, this guy's paying. So maybe you can get another thousand out of him. Always make them sign off. Hey, you got to sign this piece of paper saying you took cash for keys. You delivered me the keys and you gave us possession of the property for fifteen hundred dollars on this date. Have them sign on that dotted line. That will keep them psychologically from even thinking they're going to come back. And if they did come back, you would have a, a new piece of paper saying, hey, look, they signed this. They said they're giving us possession. They got paid. And you can show that to the cops. They'll, they'll arrest them, throw them out right on the spot in a place like Philly. And then do the lockout ASAP. Do not wait to do your lockout. Do your lockouts ASAP right on the spot. So once you get them to sign, you gave them the cash. It's same time, same time. Do the lockout right there on the spot don't wait a day um just don't delay guys because you don't want to play around with that possession and as you're locking it out you want to put more security in place and we're going to talk about the security uh next the easiest way to keep somebody out of your property or to get rid of squatters is to just keep them out in the beginning here's what you need to keep them out the first thing you need and most importantly you need cameras with remote monitoring 24 7. 
Now, let me get into remote monitoring, what that means. That means there's a third party company that is getting paid to watch that camera because these thieves are smarter than you. You think, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I'm just going to get a, a, a ring cam and um, I got it on my cell phone. You know, I can see. So I'll get an alert and then I'll just save money. I don't want to pay that $50 a month subscription fee to have somebody else watch the camera. Well, when do you think they're breaking into the property? They're one, they're going to watch your contractors. What time does, do contractors work? Contractors work from like six in the morning to four to 6 p.m. So the thieves are going to break in at, between eight and four in the morning, 8 p.m. and four in the morning. That's when they're breaking in. And usually later, 12, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., they're going to come in. You're not going to get that alert. You're going to be dead asleep. You need somebody with remote monitoring who also has speed dial to the police. The police in a place like Philadelphia, they will respond in two minutes. And I've, I've done this. You guys don't maybe know this, but in the middle of COVID, uh, break-ins were like going crazy. People were breaking in, stealing stuff to sell because people were hungry. Everybody was out of work, uh, sitting at home with nothing to do. So they started stealing out of properties. Break-ins went up like a thousand percent. It was crazy. So I set up cameras on all properties all across uh, the city. And I started catching thieves. I hired somebody from um, Southeast Asia because the time zone was swapped. So they were watching the cameras and I paid them a bonus to catch people in the act and call the cops. We caught like six people in the property actively stealing because it takes time to squat. It takes time to uh, steal things out of the property, break in, steal your stove or do something like that. It takes at least 20 minutes, right? To break something down, get it out. It takes the police about two minutes to show up in a major city like Philly. So if you have this system and somebody watching and they have the right phone numbers and they have your lockbox codes and everything, they can get the cops in. You can just catch people right in the act. I probably caught six, seven people, got them off the street, cleaned it, cleaned it up. Other people were thanking me. They're like, Brian, nobody's breaking into my houses now. I'm like, yeah, because I got them off the street, man. But um, this system will save you more than having physical security, boarded up windows, reinforcing your doors, all of those things. You Because people can break through that at the end of the day. A skilled technician will just unscrew it, unlock it, and get in. You need the camera because the camera will catch them in the act and the response time of the police will get them before they ever get settled in. So that's important. Um, step two, you need your door and window gates and guards and grills. We have special companies that we use. Anybody who's in the Boots on the Ground program, the 100 Keys Masterclass, you, you've probably heard of some of these people that we've used. If you come out to a ride along, I've shown you the steel doors and security grills. I, and I picked up on this when I was um, studying the Detroit marketplace, when they were just torching houses in, in Detroit. And I was like, man, how are they keeping people out? And I started seeing these companies that all they do is put these steel guards and gates on their properties. Um, this is something that you want to do on your vacant properties. If you make it look difficult to break in, they'll go somewhere else. People aren't looking for a challenge. Thieves are not looking for challenging situations. They're just looking for the easy break in. Uh, most people are not real squatters. A real squatter is trying to stay there even if you confront them. Most of these people are just looking for somewhere to sleep tonight, especially in C-class neighborhoods. They're trying to do some drugs and crash somewhere. So most of the time, if you catch them, they're just like, oh, no problem. I'll get my stuff, get out. They're not trying to stay anywhere. And you don't even have to pay them. They're just going to go to another property. Uh, they don't want to be looking over their shoulder. There's plenty of vacant properties in major cities um, and C-class neighborhoods, right? So most of the time, you're not going to have that issue. But if you make your property look difficult to break into, then they will just choose somewhere else. It's a path of least resistance. Number three, build relationships with the neighbors. So... In, in one sense, we don't like the nosy neighbor because if you're trying to do a rehab without permits or something, they're calling L and I, they're complaining about the noise, they're annoying. But on the other side, if somebody's trying to break in your house and squat, they're going to call because they're always looking out the window. They're always dealing with that. So you want to build relationships as a real estate developer, wherever you're building, talk to the neighbors, find a nosy neighbor who's hanging out the window, snooping, go build a relationship. Hey, I'm, I'm Brian. I'm um, building. I, I usually rebuild neighborhoods like this. Uh, here's my number. If you need anything, 
if the noise is too loud, call me. Build the relationship because they will call. Hey, somebody's in your house. Are your contractors here? No, Ms. Jones, it's 10 p.m. You see somebody? Yeah, there's somebody in the house digging around. You better make a call. That could save you as well, especially if you don't have any of the other systems in place or the remote 24-7 monitoring, which most of us don't because we're penny wise, pound foolish. So always build relationships uh, with those neighbors as well. And then one of my favorite, this is kind of extra credit, just buying houses with squatters. I'll get this question a lot. Should I buy a house with a squatter? Uh, th they said it's sight unseen, but it's dirt cheap. I mean, they're letting this thing go for 40K. Should I buy it? How do I get the squatter out? And this is where most people get their introduction to squatters is because they know there's a squatter in the house. That person, by the way, is not a squatter. Because if you go back to, um, if we go back to the fast track conditions, there you see number three. There has never been a landlord tenant relationship between the owner or a prior owner or a prior owner. So a lot of the time, this person is not really a squatter. They had a lease agreement or some type of verbal lease with the prior owner. They just stopped paying the rent at some point, and they, the you know the owner doesn't have their paperwork together. They don't know how to get them out. So they're selling the property because they don't know how to go through court and evict. You can still get that person out. The easiest way is to just do cash for keys and just get them out. So I've done this plenty. If I want to buy a house and there's a quote unquote squatter in it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to structure a 60 day close contract with the seller contingent upon vacancy. And they're going to say, well, the, the person's in here. I can't get them out. I can't close vacant. So don't worry about it. Give me 60 days. I'm going to cash for keys them. I'll get them out. And then we'll close when it's vacant. Give me 60 days. And the contract is contingent upon us closing vacant. What that means is if I can't get them out, I get my earnest money deposit back. So if you can't close vacant, I get my money back. So I have no risk. I'll put down two grand to lock up the deal. I'm then going to go to step two. I'm going to hire an attorney. I'm going to offer cash for keys. And then if they accept it, I'm going to complete the lockout and close and close as soon as possible. If they won't accept the cash for keys, then I'm just going to back out of the deal and get my money back and move on with my life. But I've done this and I've gotten these properties many times for pennies on a dollar. And you can actually negotiate against the seller. So you can go to the person and say, well, look, this deal has maybe like $70,000 of profitability. You could offer them look, I'll give you 3,500 to get out. And then you just go to the seller. Look, I need you to reduce the price by 3,500. You just make them pay for it to get the person out. It kind of confuses me to a degree because you think, well, why didn't the owner or the seller just offer this person some money out of the sale to get out? But they just don't think that way. And you'll, you'll uh, find this a lot. A lot of people and investors or, or just sellers and owners, they get emotional. As an investor, you don't want to ever get overly emotional about these properties. You just want to come up with solutions and structure deals to get people out uh, quickly. But the owner is emotional, so they're not thinking clearly. And they don't think to just give that person a cut of the sales price to get them out. So, that, guys, there you have it. Those are the three things uh, that you need to think about if you want to get squatters out of your property fast. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat section uh, or comment section and we'll answer them. But that's what you need to do. If you're going to go through court, try to fast track it, but hire an attorney first. Um, if you can fast track it, you're not going to spend that much money. Try to get your attorney on a pre-negotiated flat rate. You don't want them to be on this floating rate, uh, running up a tab, charging you by the hour. They're going to run up a 50K bill. You don't want that, not for an ejectment. You want to say, look, five, 10 grand, that's what I'm going to pay you. Get it done. I don't want to deal with anything else. And they'll do it. Um, so you can go through that fast track process or even a slow process if there is no fast track uh, within your state. If you can't do that, cash for keys, but still hire the attorney and have them do it. Make sure you're doing the right steps, uh, offering the cash for keys, starting low, let them work you up, hire the attorney, let them big dog and get the paperwork signed when they're moving out and then resecure that property. And if you never want to deal with squatters to begin with, just make sure you have your security camera systems in place. Even if you have that physical security, your security camera is more important, even to the degree where I would say if I had to choose between one or the other, 
I would go with the security camera over the physical security because physical security is only as good as that door is or the, the mind of the thief. And the thief, if they're a contractor or have any type of background, just like, you know, these guys come and secure it and screw the doors up and uh, put up the two by four, they can unscrew it. They have the same tools. So they'll just come up and zip, unzip it, hop right in. Uh, so you have to be careful with these things, guys. So, guys, hope this helped. Uh, watch this again and get locked in. Don't be afraid of squatters. Squatters are not that scary. Don't listen to the nightmare stories. Stay locked in. Brian Grimes, your real estate mentor. I'll see you guys on the next one.